In this mini tutorial, we're going to think about the innervation of the submandibular and sublingual salivary glands, um, as well as the innervation of some parts of the tongue. And specifically, we're going to look at the autonomic innervation of the submandibular and sublingual salivary glands. So let's start off by just drawing on um, a depiction of um, the submandibular or sublingual salivary glands. This is submandibular or sublingual. Um, and in addition, uh, we'll draw on a very simple representation of, of the tongue there, um, with its central groove. Furthermore, we'll draw um, a segment of the brain stem specifically focusing upon the pons and the medulla. So there's the pons and there is the medulla. We've not included the midbrain. Um, because that's not relevant to the current discussion. Now, somatic sensation, i.e. Um, basic sensations of touch, are supplied to the tongue by the trigeminal nerve, and it is the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve which is the relevant branch for this part, so that is 5C, which is the branch of the trigeminal nerve which supplies somatic sensation to the tongue. And, and it's important for our discussion to note that this branch of the trigeminal nerve, as it supplies the tongue, sits very close to the submandibular and sublingual salivary glands. And as I'm sure you can predict by now, that implies that the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve is going to provide a conduit for parasympathetic fibers to get to the salivary glands. Furthermore, we need to draw on the ganglion which is associated with the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. So it's the ganglion here. And this is the submandibular ganglion. Submandibular ganglion, which is the one which is associated with 5C. Now the second important nerve which we need to add on to this is the facial nerve. And the facial nerve is composed of two important components. And the nuclei for this reside in the junction between the pons and the medulla. The first nucleus, which is important to the um, facial nerve and which contains motor fibres, is known as the facial nucleus. So this is the facial nucleus. And the facial nucleus contains motor fibres. Oh, and just at this point, let's just remind you of the colour scheme, as it was in the previous one on the orbit. Um, black refers to uh, motor or sensory. Um, red refers to sympathetic. And blue refers to parasympathetic. So we're going to be using our black line here for um, motor supply. And the facial motor nucleus, the facial nucleus, supplies the muscles of facial expression. So these are the muscles of facial expression. Those which allow us to pull different faces. So that's the motor part of the facial nerve. Um, but as you should know, the facial nerve also has a parasympathetic part. And in this case, the parasympathetic Preganglionics, which go into the facial nerve, are found in a nucleus called the superior salivatory nucleus. So the superior salivatory nucleus provides the facial nerve with parasympathetic preganglionics, so they enter the facial nerve, and as I'm sure you're getting used to, those parasympathetic preganglionics leave the facial nerve and enter the submandibular ganglion where they synapse upon parasympathetic postganglionics which are then distributed along the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve to the submandibular and sublingual glands. And the specific um, branch of the trigeminal nerve, which carries these branches to those glands, is known as the lingual nerve. 
lingual for tongue. So the lingual nerve is the nerve which is providing um, sensation to the tongue and also parasympathetics to the submandibular and sublingual glands from the facial nerve originally. Now, in this particular case, the point, the, the, or rather the, the branch which comes off of the facial nerve carries parasympathetic fibres to the submandibular ganglion has a specific name. And it's known as the corda tympani. So corda tympani is a specialised branch of the facial nerve which has one of its roles as carrying parasympathetic preganglionics to the submandibular ganglion. And the name corda tympani um, implies that it has some kind of relationship to the ear. And, and that is the case. It travels through the middle ear on its way to the submandibular ganglion. So you can imagine that certain middle ear pathologies can have an important bearing on the autonomic supply to these particular structures. Now let's consider the sympathetic innervation. Um, and the sympathetic innervation follows the classic pattern. So here is an artery. And in this case, um, it's not an artery of the carotid system. This is actually the facial artery as it winds around the mandible. So this is the facial artery, and the facial artery in its wall carries sympathetic postganglionic fibres. And when the facial artery and the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve come into close proximity, these sympathetics join the mandibular division, pass through the submandibular ganglion without synapsing, and into the submandibular and sub lingual glands. So the sympathetic innervation is relatively simple. Um, it's just it's the facial artery instead of the carotid arteries um, where they originate from. Now before we leave this mini tutorial I just want to go back to the corda tympani uh, because it has another important role um, as well as its role in providing parasympathetic supply to the submandibular and sublingual glands. Because what corda tympani does <coughs> is it supplies the sense of taste to the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. So the anterior two-thirds of the tongue have taste fibres which are supplied by the corda tympani running via the lingual nerve. So let's draw the path of these taste fibres on in green. So here might be um, a taste bud, and it's obviously connected to a sensory neuron, and that will travel along the lingual nerve for part of its course, through that submandibular ganglion without synapsing, along the corda tympani, back in through the facial nerve to synapse in the brainstem. So this is a very interesting example of cranial nerve hitchhiking whereby it's not just the autonomic fibres which are hitchhiking along the trigeminal nerve, it's also sensory fibres as well. Um, and, and you can see therefore how important that corda tympani is because if it gets damaged, for example in middle ear pathology, it's not just going to be um, parasympathetics to glands which are going to be affected, but also taste to one side of the tongue. So I hope that was clear. Um, thank you very much.